Hello, I'm Jimlam Saiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of etiquette books. If you're interested in ordering my books, please make sure to email me. I'll link it down below here as well in the description box. If you're new to my channel here, I talk about soft skills, self-development, etiquette. If you're interested in all of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. If you're an old viewer, welcome back to my channel. I'm delighted to see you here. And please don't forget to put a like under this video if you truly enjoyed this video because it helps me to become YouTube algorithm's favorite and I know what kind of topics you're interested in. Today's video is very, very special to me. It's something that we have been talking for almost a year and a half with Medina, who is the guest of today's episode. I am delighted to have her here. It took us a long time, pandemic got in the way of our plans, but we're finally here shooting this special episode for you with my very beloved friend and a woman that I look up to, that I am inspired by, that I adore her work, and that is Medina. Please make sure to follow her on her Instagram. Now she's gonna talk a little bit about herself so you get to know her better. So before I get to introduce you to Medina, I want to tell you a little bit about the story of how we met. We've known each other for a couple of years uh, through mutual friends. We only appeared in, at uh, certain celebrations and birthday parties together, but we never actually interacted. So one day I stumbled upon her Instagram page, that is her hobby of decorating the table and preparing this very beautiful homemade meals and I fall in love with that page so I message her and I tell her that I love your work and I find it very inspirational I never knew that you were able of doing that and it so happened that we met uh, that week at a birthday party and I love when Medina tells the story so what well, happened first of all I would like to thank you for bringing me to this project because I know how much love passion and work you put, put into it. So, uh, thank you for that. Uh, I remember that day, it was um, very, you know, I, I remember that day uh, in different way because, yes, we know each other, know, uh, knew each other before, but uh, that day we knew each other in different way because we shared our emotions, our passion uh, on this, in this, by the way, I'm so sorry, my English is not very perfect. I'm working on it, so I hope you will understand. And next day, I, it will be better. Uh, yeah, um, I remember that you are going to be to be published. Yes. Uh, it was your book. It is your book. I'm in love with the book. You know that. And uh, that time, I just uh, has opened my page, yes. Instagram page. It was just hobby page where I shared my photos from my table setup and decoration stuff. And uh, I remember that your support, you. you came to me and you said such a lovely words. You support me that you should continue. This is not in hobby way, but you should open your company. You should think about it deeply. After two years, it's like, <laughs> like cause my magic company. It's small business, it's small company, but you know, for the woman who just uh, two years ago worked uh, in state oil company, uh, I was very happy in my work. I was very happy in that work, uh, which where I was like engineer, you know, mm -hmm. different, definitely different um, sides. Yeah. So Medina, you told me that a lot of the people that you worked with, your colleagues, your previous team leader has supported you in this project, which is a great uh, thing to have because not a lot of people get that much support. But I also think because they believed in you, because they saw your work that you were doing, because I was the person that saw this on your Instagram uh, and I thought you have such a huge talent for what you're doing and so now we're seated here after two years and this is your showroom you hold master classes here you work with different companies you organize um, different kind of events you did a glamping that I attended recently um, you have a team of people that are working with you uh, so how did you grow from a just an Instagram page to something as big as this I, I mean, it's such an inspirational story and I really want my viewers to see how you pursued your passion and made it work. If you want to become someone, if you want to create something, you can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. You always need people around you who will support you, who will help you with the little things. 
like your family, your friends, like in my situation, like my uh, colleagues also. So I met at right time, uh, at right moment, good people uh, with whom I shared my ideas, with whom I shared what I want to share, actually, you know, it is cousins, it is uh, be beautiful things, it is warm feelings, it's atmosphere. And uh, when I shared it, a lot of people around me understand and support, understood and support me at this way, that your message to the people is like good, uh, good messages, it's good vibes. So why not? We will support you if you want we will work with you and right now in my team 11 fears without them i i can't imagine myself i it what you feel, you see around it's only we create we create it together you are good leader you are a strong person when you have you with you uh, right and supportive and uh, the people who love yeah. it loves you yeah loves you. So, the people that love you that love you a... yeah i'm happy person yeah. by that way because they are feeling they are not they are not waiting for me to do something i'm coming to showroom and uh, i saw different decoration things i saw they're giving like tea presentation in their ways already. We um, learn a lot of things uh, from each other. And yes, uh, I, I'm pretty happy per person that uh, I can I can create perfect team because when you love, yes, maybe for another a lot of people it will be it it will sounds a little bit uh, like. Uh, romantic that in team shouldn't be love no creative team love um, passion is a very important thing Medina, from what you have mentioned you're a very happy person because you have an amazing team you said there are 11 people working for you and actually 10 of them are women and there is also right now as we're in a showroom doing this interview there is an employee that came here with her baby in the um, crib and i really adore that the fact that you allow women to come to work with their kids and you empower them and allow them to do what they love without feeling shame or guilt of bringing their child to work how have you managed to do that and just you know how do you empower and share love actually it comes from my childhood my father took me uh, with him to his job to his work and i spent by that time i spent with him a lot of time actually children shouldn't be barrier in your achievement uh, i'm also mother and my son my son um, often very often comes to my showroom and spend here time with uh, with all of us you know a lot of uh, new and creative things i noticed that he started to do after when he going home back in the future i'm pretty sure that he will uh, support working women support creative things he will understand that uh, he should help women to achieve their goals their dreams and maybe i am that person who will teach him that point of view exactly i'm sure you are because you're such a big role model not just only as your mother but also as a person who's already recognized um, in the country that has done so much work and is a successful entrepreneur i can say thank you so much medina for doing this interview as, as well i know that um you know english is your third language uh, yeah. actually fourth language um you're fluent in a lot of other languages thank you for so much for doing this in english thank you so much it's actually you know i explained to you uh, before that in front of camera it's a little bit hard but i am working on it and i promise you next hour in our next interview it will be better because i want to share my my views my thinkings creative ideas uh, with everyone mm -hmm. it, there shouldn't be language barriers we should keep in touch with everyone in this planet so i will try my best and uh, Let's go to the table serving place. Okay, let's where go. Where I show you our beautiful things. Thank you.
Now let's move to the next stage of this interview and that is a table setup specifically designed by Cozy by Mehdi. So Jamila, for today's our video, we prepared two different style table setup. Uh, our first setup will be in classic style where I want to show you how four different colors could amazingly, perfectly can combine between each other. There will be green, as you see, white, black and gold. And let's let's start. Let's and get show. started. White tablecloth is always a win-win position. You can show everything on it. Details, uh, pieces, any colors. So I love work with white tablecloth. In classic table setup, it's very important. So Medina is telling us from the design point of view that white tablecloth is important because when you have a white color tablecloth, you can use any kind of decorations, any kind of table objects. Um, it looks perfectly well with everything and also it makes you see the color and the ornaments and the details a lot more. But it's also important to know that from an etiquette standpoint of view, white tablecloth is the only one that is permissible for formal table setup. And it should be made of material. So it should be made of a cloth well ironed and well bleached. I also really really like this place because they're so minimal and also as you mentioned before they look so luxury but we place them here um, how do you measure the distance from the table? As I said to you earlier um, in informal table serving it's not important actually where they should be but in formal table serving they should be one and a half, two centimeters away from the table. Okay. So in informal table serving, if you will put it in the right way, of course, um, a lot of people will not use this kind of rule. Exactly. It looks more balanced when you do that. Um, as you mentioned before, you can do it. Uh, it's an option. You can do it for informal as well. It's not a must. But for formal table setup, always make sure that you place your plates about one and a half and two centimeters away from the table. So we here we have. Uh, dinner plate and salad plate is the main uh, objects of table serving. Mm -hmm. Next uh, is our cutler set, mm -hmm. oh, beautiful. which is dinner spoon, mm -hmm. dinner knife, yes. dinner fork. And of course, you if you have dessert, you should use uh, spoon and fork for dessert mm -hmm. and you are putting it on the top of your plate. So Medina has showed us how to do the table setup in terms from the design point of view. I want to explain a little bit from the etiquette standpoint of view. We have placed the spoon further away from, from the plate and it's on the right hand side, which means whatever we're eating, uh, the first utensil, the first um, cutter object that we're going to be using is a spoon. This is a dinner spoon. Uh, it can be used for soups, but also as a main course as well, spoon. But if this would be used to eat something of a dinner course at the end of the meal, then we would place it closer to the plate, uh, therefore understanding that the last meal would be eaten with a spoon. But since we have placed it further away, and this will be the first one used, it's likely that we're going to eat something of a, uh, of a soup-like. Uh, then we have the dinner fork and knife. The knife blade is facing inwards so that we don't cut the guests or uh, they don't accidentally cut themselves while they're uh, you know, picking up their glasses. Then we have the uh, dessert fork and spoon that is placed above the plate. And the reason their handles are facing this way is because once these are cleared out, we can then move this to their subsequent sides and start eating the dessert. So that's from the etiquette standpoint of view. So next, our main objects in table serving is our glasses, which is for water mm -hmm. and for your wine. Here we put just one glass, which could be uh, for a white wine and for red wine also. You can use it for it. Okay. So, uh, after, this is our main objects of table serving. From etiquette standpoint of view, so uh, Medina has mentioned that we have placed these very beautiful uh, glasses that actually, in terms of their design, they match the, that of the plate and that of the utensils. So kind of combining the elements in table setup, which is very important to creating this balance in terms of the proportions of the colors. Um, but um, uh, this one she has opted to, to serve water in. So either way is correct. You could place the water um, one uh, closer to 
your right hand side but also in a lot of table setups this is usually placed as the first one above the knife or the last um, utensil that's closest to the plate and then uh, the wine one is placed right next to it because this will be remaining here for the duration of the meal whereas the wine glass can be changed or it can be refilled and can be uh, changed say to a champagne glass uh, so either way is correct but let's assume we have placed it like this what do we have afterwards, Medina? Next, actually, napkins, which is very important mm -hmm. uh, for me in decoration, mm -hmm. table setup, because you can perform, uh, perform them in different ways. Mm -hmm. So, here we used rings for mm -hmm. that, but we also have another napkins mm -hmm. where already have printed nice ones embroidery so this is a golden embroidery that's specifically which also done. suitable with yeah. this setup mm -hmm. but for me this rings is a um, very match with this uh, yeah. our cutlery set and our this gold yeah. rings yeah so it's beautiful but i will choose this one yeah you prefer that one yeah um, i actually like both of them uh, i think they just look very differently on a table setup uh, also sometimes you can see like oh certain families that have their you know all the tables set up left from their grandparents they might have embroidered their last name or perhaps their initials initials on the napkin making very much uh, of a big matter or of a royal household feeling yeah. so if you want to do that you can of course use this kind of uh, napkins as well i think they look very nice and very presentable but i also really like this one with a ring um, and we can place them on the right hand side we can place them on top of our plate yeah. so it's really up to you and there are different kind of rules and then it's kind of uh, the element in the table setup where you have more freedom to choose where to place it as I remember, in formal dinner, napkins should stay on the left side. Though. It depends on the country that we're in, actually, because in some countries, whereas if you're in Europe or if you're in France or England, the rules can be very different. Um, usually, the used napkin is placed on the left-hand side, which is why you often see the napkin placed either on top of the plate or on the right-hand side. But yes, there are some countries that's permissible to leave it on the left-hand side as well. Uh, and the most important, I think, thing to mention here is that uh, the tablecloth and the napkin should match each other in terms of the color and in terms of the fabric when it comes to a formal setup. So our main object for table serving is here. Now let's decorate our table. Let's do it. Let's start from the candles. Mm -hmm. I used uh, candle holders. Okay which I mentioned earlier in gold mm -hmm. with gold uh, signs this is vintage mm -hmm. so this is actually vases oh yes and you can use it like okay. an uh, vases and like candle holders also did you paint them yourself or was no, it no like we this? bought it from our vintage shop okay that's very nice yes and we have white candles, which is important to note that for formal occasions we only use uh, candles that are white because again everything is white. Again, for informal occasions you can experiment with color of the candles, but for formal well, you should always keep the white color. So, there is a lot of white and gold, but I mentioned earlier that we have four colors. Uh, here we see white and gold, we have also black, which I will show you later and green you see a lot of green and a lot of plants here so we will put a little bit green uh, to our table because it's there are a lot of white and gold mm -hmm. yeah, take this one okay i'll use the shorter one it looks so nice i never thought that the green plants would look so nice on with gold and white yeah it looks see? really nice mm -hmm. and the main objects of the decoration on table serving is flowers yeah let me show you and explain you I want why. the viewers to be able to see so <laughs> let me try it okay so i prepared uh, three vases with fresh flowers for me it is very important to use them it could be dry flowers but natural uh, here as you see we also uh, use white and green Flowers. This is Eustomas, mm -hmm. and which is match with the elements 
of the, our table set up. Okay. This basis for each person, okay. we put it on the left side of our plate. Mm -hmm. So we are actually sitting like that, yeah. but when you are sitting in front of each other, they, they should uh, be looks nicer. Yeah, nicer together. Right yeah, now. right now, of course, because we have set the table so we that... We will put the photo of that. Yeah, we have set the table in a way that it's viewing you, but if you were seated in front of each other, then this would look a little bit more harmonious and coordinate because everyone would have a set. So Medina, you mentioned that, you know, the flowers should be fresh. It's very important for you. Um, it doesn't matter if you're doing formal decoration or informal, you always try to use uh, natural flowers, either the way they are or dried ones. I've seen a lot of them that you use in glamping and all other events they're very beautiful like that uh, but also from the etiquette standpoint of view for formal occasions you have to use fresh flowers it's important it shows you know this luxury vibe this formality of the event um, but when you select the, the, the flowers you have to be very careful about where you're placing them in which country you're using them so in certain countries for example the white lilies in France are not considered a good flowers to be put on a table because they're considered to be flowers that are used during yeah. tragic events. So you have to make sure that you use the right choice of flowers. But also in terms of the visual aspect, you have to make sure that flowers are either matching. below, yeah, they're matching. They're either below your eye level or above your eye level if you're seated, because that way it doesn't get into your way when you're talking mm -hmm. to other people. Again, uh, you can experiment. This one, this bunch, it might be at your eye level, but it's quite thin. So that's why it doesn't obstruct the viewer from each other when they're seated across each other. It's like you could put it in the corner of your table where it, uh, you can see each other, but this is very part, important part of your table setup where you can match all these uh, things together. Yeah, it's important. It adds a little bit of a different proportion in terms of the height and everything, mm -hmm. uh, but you have to make sure that it's not in the way of the people when they're seated. And now the final element is to light up our candles. The etiquette rule says that you have to light up the candles before the guests arrived and you light them. Okay, you go ahead and do it. These are such our nice luxury. matchsticks. <laughs> They're so nice, uh, but you have to light them when the sun has set. So that's the general rule regarding etiquette. Today, uh, while we're shooting this video, the sun has not set, but still we're doing it for you. So you get to get to see the final version of the formal table setup. <laughs> So we finished with, uh, with the first one, mm -hmm. but are you ready for the second one? I am. Mm, what is it? It will be surprised. My fairies! So Medina, this was unbelievable. In a moment of, I don't know, in a couple of minutes, you guys and your whole team changed everything around and this looks beautiful. Thank you so much for this lovely surprise. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, my dear. Uh, I, uh, I remember that you uh, mentioned several times that you like Bohemian style. Um, so I decided that for this video, for our ta second table setup, will be in Bahamian style, but with New Year touch because our video will be published near this uh, holidays. Maybe this uh, table setup inspires someone to celebrate New Year in different way. I mean, not traditional, which is uh, Bohemian style is very popular uh, in our days. This New Year touch will bring something different yeah. so um, what about uh, bohemian style a lot of people called it not only bohemian but also boho style mm -hmm. i love actually bohemian style because it sounds very glamorous rich yes Nidina, you know that i love bohemian style it's actually i think one of the most uh, popular style of the decorations that you do and i've been following your instagram and all your decorations and especially boho style is my favorite but i've never seen anything like this before uh, because for me bohemian is usually just you know these beige colors pillows all around but this one is more upscale and luxury and glamorous as you mentioned and i see this glitter 
circular or round that's repeated in the decoration as well as the table setup. But for those viewers that don't really know about Bohemian style, can you please explain what are some main elements of the decoration when it comes to boho? How would you describe it? Uh, let me start it from the why I choose uh, Bohemian style, like my main style, because uh, my father, uh, from my childhood, he collected um, antique pieces. Mm -hmm. And when I married, he just uh, called me and said me that, look at them, they're beautiful. At that time, I didn't understand how can I use it. A lot of gold, I don't like it. Uh, at, for that time, I uh, liked more, a much more modern style. Then uh, when I opened my page, Instagram page, and started to research what is like, uh, what is uh, right now uh, more uh, fashionable, more uh, glamorous. But then I saw one Instagram play page from Australian designers. Uh, they're very good about Bohemian style. They, uh, they're doing picnics, glamour, uh, glampings, and using this stuff. Uh, the main objects in Bohemian style, antique stuff. Bohemian style loves bronze things. So as you see here, uh, I used antique um, candle holders, vases, even our glasses, also antique from bronze. This looks like it comes from Roman Empire. <laughs> yeah. So for all this style, I also choose, actually this is not antique, but this is our uh, local brand, Zellhome, but very close to antique and that's why I choose them. It truly looks like an antique, but it's not. Um, it's a really nice replica. The same thing we, should, we could say about the rings. They're also uh, from Turkish designers, but very uh, close to our style. And the plates, presents from my father. They're so heavy. Are they made of marble? Yes, they are. Oh, okay. Pretty heavy. So uh, from what I see here, we have a lot of colors, brown, beige. Um, can you generally tell the viewers as well, what are some colors that are only used in boho? As you see in this uh, table setup and actually around the uh, setup, like some decoration pieces, we keep like no bright colors you should use in this uh, bohemian style. This is a shade of brown, shades of brown, Bordeaux, Haki, black, gold, uh, but vintage gold, vintage bronze. It could be also silver, but also vintage. Okay. So, so these yes. are the only colors that you are allowed yes, to use yes. in Boho. As I see now, there are a lot of combining elements at the table setup, but also what we were talking about earlier with you is that when you are thinking of the colors on the table setup, you should also consider the colors around it in the interior it's very design. Important. It's very yeah, important. I've, I've noted that in the, for, in the formal setup before, we had all green plants that would match the table setup, and then they changed everything in this particular spot, and they added some brown colors in order to match, right? The Extremely transformation yeah. to feel the beautiness of the style. Exactly. Any style. Any style. You should uh, put some details to feel this style. It's exactly. very important. It's very important. Thank you so much. I hope you guys now having seen this will be able to recreate it at your own home or perhaps you'll be inspired using the tips from Medina of how to create beauty and coziness in your own home. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned some tricks and tips from Medina, the founder and the entrepreneur of Cozy by Medi. Uh, please don't forget to follow her on Instagram as well. If you want to follow me, you can do <laughs> so too. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. And ordering my books, please make sure to email me. Email me. <laughs> the bell button. <laughs> Bring Putin into it. it. Just. Table, uh, oh. it's okay. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry.
sorry. And plates. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking <laughs> plates. From marble. <laughs> and my favorite plates, presents from my daddy. Daddy, stop. And my favorite plates, present, my, present. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite plates, presents from my father, uh, they made from Mars. <laughs> they made from plates, presents from my father. They're quite heavy, actually. From marble, actually. <laughs> <laughs>